Welcome back to the Profit Builder Unscripted. I'm excited about my guest, Roger Blue, who is talking today about his dad, who is a contractor in Stafford, Kansas. And he talks a little bit about uh, his dad and his philosophy about running his business and really kind of his philosophy about how he ran his life. I love this story and I'm excited to be able to share it with you today. So let's go ahead and jump in. I am so grateful to have my guest here today, Roger Blue. And um, Roger and I met um, about a year ago under some rather unfortunate circumstances. I actually met Roger at um, his dad's funeral. And I knew Roger's dad just a little bit um, because he lived in the same assisted living facility that my in-laws live in. And um, I asked Roger to be a guest here today because Roger was the one who delivered the eulogy for his uh, dad. And not only did he do an extraordinary job just delivering it, but his message um, really touched me. It touched me as a daughter. Um, and it also touched me as somebody who works with um, people in the contracting industry that um, Roger's dad was a contractor. And um, I just, so Roger, thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you. You're for welcome. Being a guest. And thanks for sharing this story. I know this isn't you know, necessarily easy. I'm asking you to reread your dad's eulogy. Um, and especially that I know it's just, we're just up, up on a one year anniversary for that. So thank you. I really appreciate that. I appreciate your, your generous heart for being willing to, you know, to do this today. So, um, so I'm going to let you uh, uh, maybe just take a minute and talk a little bit about, you know, how you decided to write what you wrote about your dad and, and came to, you know, I don't know, just structure, if you will, the eulogy that you wrote. Like, what was it? How did, how were you inspired? And then I would like you to read it. I, uh, like I said, I think it's a beautiful eulogy and I think you did just an amazing job. Well, I guess um, in terms of the structure of it, um, my two brothers and I sat down and, and we kind of listed out some things that we thought were important, um, things that were memorable, things that, that um, might connect with, with the community and the family and, and friends. Um, and, uh, and then I, I, uh, I was tasked with, with delivering the eulogy. So the night before the funeral, I sat down and, and began to, to put the, the pieces of it together. And, and um, the, the metaphor of a carpenter just seemed to fit and um, uh, and and I was it the pieces just seemed to fit well into that metaphor, um, and uh, so that's that's kind of how it came together. Um, I, I hope that gets at the answer to your question. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, and your dad so, and your dad built. You you're from a small community, so Stafford, Kansas, and um, but your dad did remodeling work for many years. Yeah. Yeah, he was um, he was uh, a carpenter and worked for several other contractors um, for for years, and then um, uh, kind of midway through his career, he he started his own small company here in in a small town, and and doing construction work in a small town means you're going to do a variety of things, yeah. and uh, so he 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 did build houses. Most of the work was remodels, um, kitchens bathrooms, uh, additions, basements, um, you know, the whole gamut of things. Um, so um, he was, he was, um, uh, he was tasked to do many, many things in the community. Um, and uh, uh, as a carpenter, as a, con as a contractor. And uh, so, so the, so the experience is really quite varied um, working yeah. in a small town and it's, yeah. it's, it's perhaps different from from a from a bigger community uh, where the the a lot of the work is is um, you know building large developments um, and it's nothing like that. Um, so it's no, but, it, you know a lot of the people I deal with and I talk with oh, and I work 
with are exactly that. They're remodelers. They, yeah. you know, they work and in it's... people's homes and um and you do end up having to be a, you know, my words, jack of all trades, <laughs> especially <laughs> in small communities where you have to be able to do electrical and plumbing and you know, yes, um, yes, uh, yes, all of that, as well as carpentry. So yes, yeah. And um, the um, community that you guys lived in and grew up in when your dad came back to that community, I know that, um, you know, my in-laws had them do some work at their house. And then, you know, yeah. talking to a <clears throat> bunch of other people in that community that um, he touched a lot of lives in the process. And, um, and, and that would, I think that's also what made, um, you know, when, when you read your eulogy, it's like, you have your perspective about like you working with your dad and for your dad and, and, I, um, you know, and, and what you saw in him doing, but was also really neat in talking to other people afterwards was how much respect your dad had in the community for the yeah. work that he did and the people that he served and who he supported. And I think it's just a good example that sometimes we don't always know um, the, the difference we make in people's lives. We don't always know how we touch people and how we make a difference. And um, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you take it from here and Okay. And read the eulogy, and then we'll probably chat about it a few minutes. All right. Here we go. Straight, level, plumb, square. That's the carpenter's mantra. It starts with straight and level. In the south alley at the lumberyard, there's a straight, level line drawn on a wall. Very early in Dad's career, he bought his first high-quality level at the lumberyard in Stafford. But before he left the lumberyard that day, he laid to that level against that wall and traced that straight level line. In the decades that followed, every new level he bought was checked against that line. When he started his own company, he allowed only his levels to be used on his job sites. The precision of every job he did can be traced to that one straight level line. That straight level line perhaps also represents the greater measure of his life with his family, his friends, and his community. To his family, friends, and community, he gave a lifetime of service. Dad served in the Marine Corps from 1951 through 1953 during the Korean War. Mom and dad had been married only a few weeks when dad got his induction notice. After basic training, he was sent to CB Construction School he finished seventh out of a class of 1,200. That earned him a plum assignment, opening, opening a new carpenter shop at Marine Corps Air Station Tustin in Santa Ana, California. Dad sometimes joked that he fought the Battle of Southern California. <laughs> he was asked to select four other Marines from his CB class to fill out the crew for the new shop. He told me that selecting those four men was among the most difficult things he'd ever done because he knew that the men he selected would remain safely in Southern California and anyone not selected would be promptly sent to Korea. The weight of this decision followed him for much of his life. He served as a baseball coach, both here in Stafford and in Attica. Soon after moving to Attica, he was asked to fill in as a little league coach for one game. The coach dropped off the um, the gear bag with bats, balls, and helmets. Dad coached the team that night, but what he did not know was that the coach had actually moved out of town and Dad was now the full-time coach. He often shared a story that sounds like it came right out of the bad news bears. During a game, the pitcher called a timeout and the catcher trotted to the mound. The catcher then called in all of the players to the mound. A spectator asked Dad if, if he should go out to the mound too, Dad replied that he trusted the boys and he would go out to the mound only if they called for him. Soon enough, the boys broke the huddle and the game continued. He learned later that the pitcher's nerves got the best of him. His teammates formed a screen around the mound while the pitcher vomited. Then the boys kicked dirt over the mess and went back to their positions. Mm -hmm. Not a soul in the ballpark knew any of that had happened. 
He was very proud of those boys and he spoke of them often through the years. Dad was also active as a volunteer with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, especially when mom was a den mother. Not surprisingly, we Cub Scouts did a lot of craft projects involving woodworking. Mm -hmm. And dad endured more than his share of really bad Boy Scout camp cooking. During one memorable outing, when I was a tenderfoot, my platoon leader, a first class scout, did all the cooking. The camp out was in the spring and we woke to a cool morning. I was starving. The platoon leader cooked what he called big eggs. Basically beat the eggs, dump them in a skillet that was far too hot and leave them alone until the curd fully set. Of course they were scorched and the first bite nearly made me puke. But I was so hungry I grabbed the ketchup bottle and poured it on. Dad saw me wolfing down those eggs and figured he'd better get over and get some too. He nearly lost it with the first bite but did not show it. Big eggs became a long running joke in our family. Mm -hmm. But I also experienced dad cooking a camp breakfast on his ancient Coleman stove for about a dozen Weebelow scouts and their dad, dads. I remember as a 10 year old boy watching dad prepare that meal and I felt so incredibly proud of him and proud to be his son. Dad also served as a volunteer firefighter my brothers and I remember the sound of his old 1960 F-100 straight six, three on the tree, winding up for each gear, screaming away towards the fire station. That must have been quite a rough ride over Union Street's rough bricks. Along with his devotion and service to his family, friends, and community, Willie engaged in a lifetime of silliness. One summer day a few years ago, Dad's grandsons were visiting. Pardon me, dad's great grandsons were visiting. They were out in the yard having a water fight. Great grandpa Willie surprised everyone when he stepped outside brandishing a fully loaded super soaker water gun. He used his superior firepower to quickly subdue the boys. We have no idea why or how in his late eighties, dad obtained a super soaker. Dad gave his grandchildren their first driving experience while visiting Grandma and Grandpa Blue in Stafford. This became an important rite of passage for them, just as it has been, had been for my brothers and me. As with his own children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, any baby who made eye contact with Willie received his signature quack in return. Usually evoking a smile and a giggle, Dad enjoyed engaging curious children who might wander onto a job site. Dennis and Linda Siefkes reminded me just last evening of dad giving their then five-year-old son, John, a pile of scrap lumber to build whatever he wanted. And just a few days ago, I received a message from Dale Latta, remembering dad when he was part of the crew building an addition to the Latta home in 1960. Dale wrote, I'd have been a nearly seven or eight year old, um, I was fascinated by the whole process, probably had a thousand questions. I remember his kindness and his patience. We also remember the devotion to his friends, particularly his longtime crime partners in crime, Don Allison and John Jones. For a lot of years, dad, Don and John fished together at Stafford Lake and had weekend fishing trips to Lake Wilson or Lake Canopolis. Don and John were great role models for my brothers and me. Watching the three of them together showed us the importance of developing and maintaining close friendships, even as we grew into adults. Fighting the Battle of Southern California in the 1950s meant there were beach parties. Mom and dad met with their Marine Corps friends in Huntington Beach many Sunday afternoons. Dad spoke fondly of the friends he made in the, in the service and attended numerous reunions with them around the Midwest in the 1980s and 1990s. While in the Marine Corps, Dad's skills as a carpenter prompted some Radar O'Reilly moments as several officers approached him to build things like high chairs and Adirondack furniture in the base, in the base carpenter shop. Dad said he really liked the Adirondack chair plan one captain brought in, so he cut out enough material for two the second eventually made its way back to Sylvia, Kansas. It was, was enjoyed for many years by our grandpa, Ed. We remember one particular Halloween party when, with the Cub Scouts when dad truly went above and beyond. Mom made, a little, uh, mom made a little orphan Annie costume for him to wear. 
red dress, white bloomers, curly wig, with the lenses of his glasses covered with white paper and narrow slits to see through. No one knew who Annie was. Hmm. He, sidled, he sidled up close to Walt Koontz. Uh, Walt and Levina lived across the street from us and were dear friends. Walt didn't recognize dad, wanted no part of the oversized Annie and immediately stood up and hustled away. Willie loved every second of being little orphan Annie. Dad was good at pulling pranks, but he was equally able to enjoy being pranked. One of his favorite stories begins with him trying to prank Margie Milton. He put a fake parking ticket on her car not long after she first got her driver's license. For dad's next birthday, Margie dropped by the house with a beautifully decorated birthday cake. Although the icing was real, the cake was just a big block of styrofoam. Oh, how dad loved to tell that story. As young men, dad offered my brothers and me opportunities to learn about the relationship between excellence and integrity. From our Boy Scout days with dad, we remembered the last task when breaking camp is to police the site. We were to make sure we left nothing behind. Dad had an amazing ability to find whatever we had overlooked. It was usually easy to make sure we picked up everything we brought, but dad insisted we pick up anything left by previous campers. This is a ritual we still follow when camping today. One of the more poignant lessons for me on the relationship between excellence and integrity came the first summer I worked for dad. I was home from college and the main project for the summer was to build a hog farrowing house for Dennis and Linda Seifkees. I was sent to the roof to install four long ridge vents along the peak of the roof. Dad did not agree with the way I was going about it. He insisted that all four vents be precisely lined up, each with the next and all with the building. I protested by saying, it's just a hog house. That was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> Dad pointed to the far end of the field, east of the job site and said, sooner or later, Dennis is gonna be out there swathing or baling hay. And when he turns around at the far end of the field, he will be lined up exactly with the roof line and he will see those vents are crooked. And then he will see it every time he looks at that building. That lesson of always doing it right, whether hog house or mansion, is, is one that was, a, was hard to learn and much harder to live by. But that was the mantra, straight, level, plumb, square. Carpentry does have its moments of perfection. But for the carpenter, perfection is hidden among the expected. Dad did a small project on the church parsonage. It had a flat roof over the back entrance that was prone to leaking. Dad's solution was to cover the flat roof with a sloping roof. He sent the bill to the church board and they responded by saying they were not sure if they should pay him because they couldn't tell whether he'd actually done anything. The sloping roof looked like it had always been there and was always meant to be there. Perfection hidden among the expected. There is so much that a carpenter does perfectly that is simply not seen and therefore not appreciated. Although there are so many wonderful things we can say about Willie, we also acknowledge that there is likely so much more perfection that we simply don't know about, the perfection hidden among the expected. Straight, level, plumb, square. Thank you, I love that, I loved it as much this time. Time I oh. heard you say it. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, that was awesome. That it's was awesome. it's always just to to read that again um, brings back a lot of memories and and a lot of feelings, and um, and it it means a lot to me to be able to share that. Um, it's an honor to do that for Willie. Yeah, thank you, Roger. I really I so oh, appreciate it. Yeah, I so appreciate it. And um, yeah, so thank you. Um, Huh, I'm a little bit emotional. Um, <laughs> so I'm a little bit, I'm a little uh, turned off right now. But um, I'll just say, like, um, you know, I, I, I listened to that, and like, I listened to it as a daughter. Um, I listened to it as somebody in a community. I listened to it as, um, you know, again, serving this this industry and this trade, and and. Uh, and I just, you know, I, I love that, you know, it's uh, that it was really clear that your dad 
took a lot of pride. Willie took a lot of pride yes. in what it yes. is that he did. Yes. And um, he wasn't willing to compromise on that. Um, and he was a very fun and humane person in the process, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, yes. Yeah, it could be playful and, um, and uh, yeah, just uh, it, very down to earth all at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a good yeah. man. And he raised an amazing three sons. And thank you. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, dad and, and your father in law go a long way back. Um, dad and, and Carol were scout masters together before I was born. So okay. they go back a long, long ways. Yeah. 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 Another um, salt of the <laughs> earth, good human being who I. Yeah. Yeah. Was Carol before. was the best. Yeah. 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 Good, good man. Yeah. Well, Roger, thank you. Um, I'm I so appreciate you, you sharing this again. Again, I know that you know we're on the one year anniversary, and yeah, um, it takes courage and uh, and a special heart to be willing to come and share this story. So thank you, and thanks again, everybody, for being here today and listening or watching if you're on YouTube. And make sure to. Um, join or subscribe below and we'll look forward to seeing you next time on the Prophet Builder Unscripted.